pen. A fountain pen. The whole surface of the barrel is smooth, but only one side has a square engraved on it, which seems quite out of place. Poker cards. The poker cards from the G4 district are a bit different from the more prevalent version. The more prevalent version originated from the G3 district, with four suits, spades, hearts, clubs, and diamonds. On the other hand, the G4 version has a nature theme, with the four suits replaced by fire, trees, water droplets, and the moon. Writing that down! There have been many theories as to why this is, but there is still no definitive answer. However, this is quite ironic in my opinion, because the culture and purpose of G4 has nothing to do with nature at all. But more importantly, why would Winzo Loomis bring a, pack, a deck of cards to Myers Corporation, and specifically these four? Hmm. Every employee should know that it's strictly forbidden to carry non-work-related items, let alone playing cards. What's even stranger is, these four cards happen to contain all four suits, and the numbers just happen to be from f A to 4 as well. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. A is usually 1, isn't it? Obviously, this is some kind of hint that Winston was giving himself. It is some kind of code. Especially mixed martini. <laughs> oh, that's his. It has become more than just a mere pleasure of taste for me. It is now a necessity of life. <laughs> Can I try this now? Warning. The device will unlock automatically after entering the correct answer. Why is that a warning? Alright, so I think green triangle, uh, blue square, yellow diamond, ah, and red circle. Yes! Ah, oh, we are the greatest! We are the greatest! It worked! I can't believe it! You're incredible! Yeah! I have solved the puzzle. <laughs> oh yeah, we still got this scalpel. Can uh nothing special. This open? Yeah. Haha. <laughs> the room behind the door was much darker. My eyes had a hard time adjusting to the sudden darkness. Mm -mm. Eh. What was that? I just stepped on some kind of wet sticky substance. I bent down to try and reach for it but my arm was nicked by something sharp. Ouch! Are these... shards of glass? That was when I suddenly realized that there was a huge glass chamber standing in front of me. Ooh, and inside it was... Ah! Get back! Get back! Uh. Ooh. Is that number three? I think that's number three. Thank God! Looks like that thing is dead! Look here! Someone's in here! Huh? Someone's in the glass chamber in the middle. Oh! That's probably just a cyborg too! A cyborg? But they look as if they... Detective! Didn't you know? There are many kinds of cyborg. Many kinds? What do you mean? I'm not really an expert myself, but... Let me just read this part out for you. With that, Zalmona took out a journal from her pocket. Due to different bodies' is varying ability to withstand semi-mechanization, the phenomenon of intellectual polarization often appears in each batch of experimental subjects. Subjects that are able to withstand mechanization generally retain human facial features. And with their newly modified bodies, they exhibit superhuman abilities superior to those of ordinary humans. On the other hand, subjects that failed to successfully withstand mechanization exhibited severe intellectual degradation, thus making them behave like wild beasts. At the same time, the bodies of the failed subjects would exhibit an obvious rejection of mechanization resulting in them often giving the impression that they were falling apart. We refer to these cyborgs that have lost their intelligence as husks. It is worth noting, however, that some of the experimental subjects seem to require an acclimation period. That is, their bodies exhibit repulsion similar to that of a husk when they first undergo mechanization, 
But as long as they are fed regularly and are given ample time, eventually their bodies will be able to successfully accept the modifications they are given. Thus, after each batch of experimental subjects have been modified, we tend to leave them in the secret chamber for a period of observation. If, after that time, the subject still does not demonstrate signs of successful mechanization, we would dismember it and dump its body parts into the wastewater pool outside of the G4 district. The above was recorded in an experiment journal I found here at the corporation. In other words, there are two kinds of cyborgs. The first kind looks like a monster because its body could not withstand the mechanization, and the other is able to retain its intelligence and look exactly like a normal person because it's been successfully transformed. Yeah, but not only that. Pay attention to this next part. Since often only a small number of subjects possess the ability to withstand mechanization, we often have to dismember and discard most of the cyborgs in the chamber. And this is definitely very costly and burdensome for us. Therefore, thanks to the tireless efforts of several researchers, we have successfully developed a method to create new types of cyborg through genetic cloning technology. As a result, we no longer need to search for the minority that can withstand mechanization in batch after batch of experimental subjects. Oh. All we need to do is extract the genes of the subjects that have been successfully modified, and then we can produce them again. That makes sense. That makes horrible sense, but yeah, it makes sense. Nonetheless, since these new cyborgs do not possess any memory, we need to install a memory core inside of them, giving them memories that do not exist, thus giving them a unique personality. These memories can be extracted from any existing employee to achieve the desired personality. Hmm. In other words, these are cyborgs that are not directly modified from human beings, but are created through genetic cloning technology. But it's hard to tell them apart just by looking at them. Hmm. You mean... It's possible that there are cyborgs lurking around that look just like ordinary humans? Yeah, in a matter of speaking. Hmm. A glass chamber. There's nothing in it. Hey, buddy. A glass chamber. In it stands a cyborg that looks just like a human being. This gives me the creeps. Hey, buddy. A cyborg. Thank goodness it's dead. Are you sure about that? Uh-oh. That looks like something I'd better write down. Is this decimal to binary conversion? Correct. The binary numeral system is widely used in computing technology to represent numbers with just ones and zeros. For example, in binary, 110 means 0 plus 1 times 2 plus 1 times 2 times 2, which is 6 in decimal. Alright, bye. Nope, this is the level of math that I am not ready for. And 111 means 1 plus 1 times 2 plus 1 times 2 times 2, which is 7 in decimal. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. I hate this. I hate all of this. I despise this. I loathe this. In other words, we need to find the corresponding experimental subject number in binary. Uh, which one? I think I can figure that out because this this equation looks figure outable. Oh gosh. So what? Wait. What are we doing? What are we doing this for? Is this to open it? I don't want to open it. What does that do? We we don't we don't need to open we don't need to open any of this we don't need to do that we don't need to do that fine uh what was the first one just just sure containment unit for subject number one has been damaged why are we doing this why are we doing this wait I don't understand what we're doing and why we're doing it do we need to open up three I am stumped I am absolutely stumped <laughs> uh. I also don't know what we're doing and why we'd need to do it. Alright, so 101 is 5. So I, I'm guessing that we need 3. Okay. Wait. Aha! I have no idea what we did. What's that, number 3? How is that 3? I just guessed. I just combination guessed. I don't understand that at all. I am not that smart. I am not dumb. 
but I'm not that smart. <laughs> also, why are we doing that? Why are we opening that? I don't want to open that. Do we need to open that? Is that necessary? I've drained the chamber. Wait, which chamber? Oh, this chamber? Did we... Hey! Why does she, why does she have my hair? Why does she have my hair? Oh, so I think that's... I think that's what the player's hair looks like. The already stifling atmosphere intensifies as we cut the first glimpse of what was inside the glass chamber. Salmora was horrified at first, but her expression quickly changed to worry. But it was as if we had mutually agreed not to say anything to each other beforehand. We just stood in silence. I could sense Salmona staring right at me. But at that moment, I was completely focused on the cyborg in front of me. Let's do this, then. Uh, okay. Blah! What are we gonna... 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 What are we gonna do that for? Why? Did I miss something? Is there a reason why we're doing this? I took the scalpel that Solmona handed to me and started making deep cuts into the cyborg's body. Why are we doing this? Again and again and again. I felt emotions that I had never felt before welling up inside me. But all Zalmona did was just stare. She didn't utter a word. Because she's me. She's, she's me. I'm her. She's me. I'm a clone. I'm a, I'm a cyborg. I'm a cyborg! Before I realized it, the cyborg's chest was shredded to pieces, and revealed beneath her skin was a peculiar spherical device. I grabbed the spear with my bare hand and pulled it out. Eee. This is what you wanted, right? This cyborg's memory core? Mm. Yeah. I handed it to Salmona with my blood-soaked hand. Let's get the heck out of here. I can't stand it in here anymore. That cyborg had my hair! Am I cyborg? Detective, are you all right? Or, or is it just that it looked like we'd killed a human, but it wasn't really a human, and we were both freaked out by how lifelike that cyborg was? <laughs> detective? Stop calling me detective! You don't even know who I am! You saw it too! That cyborg we just saw. She looked exactly like me! I, I am part of the Clone Wars! I am the Clone Wars. I am I am the clone. I don't even know who you are, Zalmona. I don't remember anything at all. I thought coming here would find me the answers I wanted, but now I'm just feeling completely lost. I could be someone who doesn't even exist. Just one of the million other identical cyborgs. Draco was right all along. I shouldn't have even been here to begin with. Even with my sudden breakdown, Zalmona didn't show one ounce of anger with me. After a moment of silence, she started to speak. You feel that the truth you seek is meaningless now, don't you? You lost all hope, because you're worried that you're merely a replica. But you shouldn't let your past define you. You're right. There's no way to be certain if you are or aren't the detective I met. But whoever each of us is, is up to us. The moment you open your eyes, you are who you are, and not nobody else. So. If there's someone else, someone in the world who looks exactly like you, it's each of your own unique experiences that make up who we are, ain't it? At this moment, only you and I are standing here. This experience belongs to just us, no one else. What motivates each of us to go on with our lives is the countless exciting possibilities that lie in store. And in the near future, you're bound to meet new people and make new friends. And maybe, They'll become your new family. People who are willing to sacrifice their lives for you. You mean like... You mean like... Draco? Uh. People who would... Sacrifice their lives for me? Where's Draco? Where's the boy? Where's Dino? Is Dino okay? Salmona's words were somehow very reassuring. It was very different from how I had imagined her to be. I never thought I would hear such words from you. <laughs> <laughs> Probably something I picked up during my previous profession. Huh? Don't worry too much about it. It's irrelevant now. Anyway, thanks a lot for your help. 
You have no idea how important this device is to me. Zalmona. Why do you need the cyborg's memory core? It's a long story. You said you lost all your memories. But seeing that you've found your way into Maya's, I think it's safe to assume that you've heard the urban legends about the G4 district. G4 district's urban legend? You mean the infamous G4 cyborg incident? Close. But I'm thinking particularly about the end of that legend. To this day, people still mysteriously vanish in the G4 district. Roma says that the spirits of the victims from the experiments are still wandering the streets, taking the lives of those unfortunate to cross paths with them. Ah, oh, I remember. Right, and you don't need me to tell you that ghosts ain't real. These recent disappearances in the G4 district are the deliberate work of a certain someone as well. Are you suggesting that Myers Corporation is behind these recent disappearances as well? The Myers Corporation that's continuing operations covertly? Yeah, something like that. But here's the thing. A lot of details about these cases are different from the original G4 cyborg incident. In the G4 cyborg incident, Myers Corporation turned their own employees into cyborgs and kidnapped ordinary citizens to use as cattle feed. But most of the people who go missing nowadays aren't ordinary citizens. It's people who either had a history with Myers or who were former employees of Myers. Did Myers Corporation turn them into cyborgs as well? Or were they just used as cattle feed? If they are all once somehow associated with Myers, it makes sense that Myers would simply want them gone. Precisely. But many people don't believe that this series of disappearances is just the work of one person. A dangerous criminal who is extremely careful, so much so that they'd never left a single fingerprint behind, or a clue as to what really happened to the victims. And this person is known as the most wanted criminal in the G4 district. <gasps> As for how they're connected to Myers, no one is really sure, but there's one person who's seen them that's still alive. Only one person? Who's that? That person is me. What? Yeah, the most wanted criminal in G4 district messed up once, and I was there when it happened. <laughs> it was a dark and windy night. I had just gotten back to my apartment building and was ready to go inside my apartment to relax. <sighs> but, as I was walking past the apartment on the same floor, the power went out. The hallway was enveloped in complete darkness. I couldn't see nothing around me. Ooh. Just then. I heard a blood-curdling scream accompanied by with what sounded like flesh being torn off the bone from the apartment next to me. Ooh. A person rushed out of the apartment and brushed past me. They were in such a panic I wasn't even sure if they noticed my presence. <laughs> Shortly afterwards, the power came back on. <laughs> and the hallway that had been spotless beforehand was completely different after the power was restored. The walls and floor were painted red with blood, and the apartment's door, which had previously been closed, was half ajar. Holy crap, this is serious! Without thinking much, I pushed open the door of the apartment to check in on my neighbor. Mm -mm. And what I saw before me was the most horrible thing I'd ever seen in my life. Ah, I knew they were gonna do that. Ooh. Ooh. A man on the floor, his body shredded to bits. The room was strewn with pieces of his body and entrails. But that wasn't even the worst part. The scariest thing was, even though his head was completely detached from his body, his mouth was still open and closing as if he were desperately trying to catch his breath. Oh yeah, that is pretty terrifying. That's pretty horrible. That's pretty bad right there. That's pretty bad. Mm, pretty bad. Pretty scary. Pretty bad. Hey! Hey, hang in there. I'll call an ambulance right away. Even though I don't think they're going to be able to do much. I impulsively rushed to help him, even though I knew very well that it was much too late. Just then, some of the neighbors had heard the scream and rushed over. But my attempts to help the victim were misunderstood. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Murderer! She's a murderer! Do you see anything on my hands? <laughs> Grab her! Don't let her get away! Wait, wait! I can explain! Aw, just getting home and you're framed for murder. But it was too late for me to say anything. And then, 
What happened after that? After that, as embarrassing as it sounds, I became G4's most wanted criminal. Although I've managed to escape from the G4 police, it's getting much harder to finding a new apartment these days. But please believe me. I really wasn't the one who killed him. I wouldn't even hurt a fly. I believe you, Zalmona. But then, you didn't actually get a good look at him either. Ah, <sighs> you're right. The corridor was completely dark when I met him. I didn't get to see what he looked like either. If that's the case, how can you be so sure that the killer is the same person who was responsible for the recent series of disappearances in G4? Honestly, I can't. But I later learned that that victim, my neighbor, was Dr. Richard Enemon, a former employee of Myers. And, as always, the police found no fingerprints from any suspects at the scene. Of course, except for mine. That's too much of a coincidence, don't you think? So my guess is, the killer was originally going to kidnap Dr. Henman and murder him somewhere else. But for some reason, he screwed up that time. So he killed Dr. Henman in a hurry and ran away. And what's more interesting is, the way Dr. Henman was murdered was very similar to how the core members were killed in the G4 cyborg incident. They were all ripped to pieces. So it's quite possible that this is the same person who got away with killing the core members. Then, the reason you were looking for the cyborg's memory core is... Yep, as I was saying, many of the victims of the recent unexplained disappearance has some connection to Myers. It's hard not to conclude that the murderer also has a very close relationship with Myers. And each of the cyborgs that Myers produces through cloning will have a memory core. Each device stores certain memories, giving the cyborgs the personalities they would lack otherwise. Most of these memories were extracted from Maya's employees. I understand now. You want to find the real murderer by reading the memories in each memory core, thus proving your innocence. Exactly. Not just for my own sake, but also for the safety of the G4 district. I'll keep searching until I find out the truth, even if it's the Maya's corporation who's behind all this. Cool. Hmm. Now what? Alright, that's all I have to say. Anyway, thanks again for helping me out. Go ahead and take this key card. You know, the thing that you're here, you're here for, like, for an hour now. I took the key card to the legal department that Zalmona handed to me. Thank you, Zalmona. But, are you sure you're gonna continue your investigation? You know, if you wanna get out of here with me right now, that wouldn't be impossible. Huh? But isn't the gate to the lobby closed? I know, I know. But the truth is, I accidentally forgot about this. <laughs> Salmona took a watch out of her pocket. Um, a watch? Oh, darling, this watch is more than meets the eyes. It was originally a gift from an old friend of mine, but I've made a few modifications to it. Just by wearing it, I can teleport myself anywhere. That seems universe-breaking and also extremely convenient. How did you forget something that important? But the downside is... It can teleport me anywhere. What do you mean? As in... I can't decide where we'll be teleported to. <laughs> I was once teleported inside a man's bathhouse. Incredibly embarrassing situation. But hey, there's risks with anything. Wouldn't you agree? So, you gonna come with me? Uh, I'm gonna save my game. That's what I'm gonna do. Let's get the heck out of here. I'm sorry, Zalmona. I can't leave just yet. There's this person that, even though I can't remember how we're connected or why, he was willing to risk his life for me. And that person is currently trapped in the mayor's lobby. I'm worried about him. I see. Do you want me to come with you? No, Zalmona. That would be too dangerous. This is all my fault. I should never have come here. I mean, he kind of came here of his own volition too, but you know, whatever. I can't get another one of my friends involved. I don't want to see them get hurt. I understand. If that's the case, promise me that you'll take care of yourself. I hope we can meet again someday. Maybe then, you'll be able to tell me your real name. I'll see you later, miss. When you get your memories back, 
Be sure to tell me all the stories about your past, alright? Of course. Goodbye, Zelmona. Hopefully she, like, didn't teleport into a wall or anything. She's gone. I wonder where she'll be teleported to this time. Alright. Well then, it's time for me to push forward as well. Next stop? The legal department. Alright. Ooh.